Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today's Monday. Normally I do the clearing the bases recording on Sunday, but mixing things up a little bit this week. Tomorrow is uh, 4th of July. Happy 4th to everybody. Um, hopefully you're doing something fun. Uh, we're, we're taking it easy. Obviously, I, I've mentioned before my mother had open heart surgery two and a half weeks ago. So we're having an easy home day and a barbecue, some burgers, some dogs, and uh, hopefully play some yard games if it ever stops raining here. It has been crazy. First of all, I want to remind you that uh, next Tuesday, the 11th of July, I'm doing a live stream. It is set up already. If you go in there and go to my channel, click on the live tab, and then you can click on notify me. And I have five special guests lined up as of right now, celebrating two years of me being on YouTube. Mike Moynihan, Chris Sewell, and three others will be there. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll probably plan on going. I'll go for 90 minutes. Each of them will stop in for like 10 or 15 minutes. I just want to thank them for the the help they've provided to me along the way. Uh, And next up, ah, yes, Clearing the Bases is now sponsored by Iron Guard Supplies. Iron Guard you can go in, you can get sports card supplies, nine pocket card binder pages. And of course, my internet's going to be slow here as I load this up. They also have sleeves, top loaders, semi rigids, and magna armor, which I don't even know what this is. Oh, they're, uh, they're mags, of course. And when you order, you can put in code JUNKWAX20 for 20% off your order. Next up, I have Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I went to see this last Thursday. This is not collectibles related, but I wanted to share. I grew up a huge Indiana Jones fan as a kid. Had to see the the last one on the opening night. What an awful disappointment that was. Terrible movie. Dial of of Destiny was much better. Uh, Everybody in my family enjoyed it. Even my 13-year-old who has a hard time sitting through movies. This was two and a half hours and there was no issue. It's a long movie, but a lot of fun, very entertaining. So that's that. Uh, There was a daylight burglary, burglary at a Toronto card shop. Three men masked stormed into a shop while they were open and stole a bunch of merchandise. Uh, ordered employees into the back room area and filled garbage bags with sports card boxes and other items. Pretty bold. There are a lot of a lot of uh, burglaries recently in sports card shops, but not usually when the when the card shop is open. <laughs> I saw this um, goose gossage rookie card autographed. 310 saves and a bleep load of strikeouts. I thought that was funny. Great inscription by Gossage. And this is an autographed Back to the Future VHS. Uh, This is not the original VHS. So this is from 1989. So I'm trying to learn more about VHS collecting. It's uh, not a very complex thing but this one i don't like this label of this company the yellow but that's okay this was a 10 on the box graded and 10 on the seal and autographed by michael j fox sold for six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars pretty cool that's something that i would love to have i would never pay anywhere near that much for that and then joe orlando former psa head now uh working for heritage i guess posted this amazing uh, PSA, uh, yeah, PSA slabbed Mickey Mantle autograph run. And this is just some of them. There's also a video out there that shows them going through. It's all the tops and Bowman cards of Mantle. And they go through it starting with 1969 tops all the way down to 51 Bowman. There's the 52 tops. It's amazing. And they're estimating it to be more than half a million dollars. And then here's this also in the Heritage Auction. Uh, this is an autographed 48 leaf Jackie Robinson. 
Very cool. No idea what this will go for. I just thought that was awesome. Mario Alejandro is somebody I just started following recently on Twitter. Awesome, awesome follow. If you like sports card stories and the history of sports cards, he is the best. Uh, posted the story about top super fractors from 2005 pristine that appear to have just walked out of the tops uh, factory where there are multiples. Um, eBay user PCB Comics and Sports listed over 100 top super fractors from 2005 pristine. There was at least one of these super fractors that a collector already owned. So then there were two of them, even though they're one of one. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, what was the rest of this? Collectors been told off the record that these are tops cards meant to be used only as replacements should the real versions become damaged. That means these cards were stolen either by current or former employees of tops or someone in their printing facility. We've seen a few of these too. It's uh, there's got to be better, better security of these ex extra one of ones. Here's this. And then uh, there's also this Rick Sutcliffe collector. One of one, he already owned a card and found another one of one for sale. So here's the one of one for sale. And this is the one he owns, I think, or maybe not. But anyway, or maybe that's what's in this video. No, maybe not. So yeah, it's happening too much. Here's a little collectibles news. Calvin and Hobbes originals brought in eye-popping prices. And I am I was a Calvin and Hobbes super fan as a kid. I still have all of the books in a tub out in my garage. These were original uh, art. And they're, in fact, signed by Bill Watterson. They, one of them sold for $174,000. The other sold for $156,000. Last year, a uh, color, Watterson colored Sunday strip, which of course are the best, sold for almost half a million dollars. I didn't even know these were collectibles. I didn't know these were even things until this past week. I just thought that was really neat. This article on ESPN. Controversial, current, <laughs> controversial rise and uncertain future of box breaks. Highly recommend reading this. It follows Rich Layton and his career as a box breaker uh, of Layton sports cards and talks all about the controversies and really everything. It's very long. I'll just do a quick scroll and you can see how long it is. It ends right there. I thought it was great. Strong recommend. Uh, and then I love postworkhards.com. Huge fan of this website. He do always does really interesting stuff like this. Baseball card business insights from a 1966 Topps baseball point of sale order booklet. Um, I don't know that I have much to add here. Well, I know I don't have much to add, but just a recommended read. This was a booklet that, that Topps sent. This is the same picture, same ball in wax wrappers at the time. You can take a look at that. And then they've got the same exact ball here. And then they show the pictures of the pages in there and then ana analyze it. I think it's pretty cool. The back of the sell sheet with the 10 cent and 29 cent pack details is the blank page. 10 cent and 29 cent pack details. Yeah, full color rub off photo in each pack free. I just thought this was cool. Can't recommend post war cards and pre war cards.com enough. Both great and apparently run by different people and unrelated. I feel like I cover Michael Jordan stuff too much here, but it's just, I love Jordan and this is um, pretty famous. The 1992 Re Reebok Olympic jacket, which he covered with the American flag because he was a Nike guy, didn't want to promote Reebok. He didn't even want to wear the jacket, but they made him wear it as part of being part of the team. 
And so he compromised by covering it with the U.S. jacket. He gave this jacket afterwards to, he tossed the jacket to an NBA public relations director, Brian McIntyre, saying, I certainly don't want it. And then he signed the jacket for McIntyre later on. Uh, and then, so now they're, it just sold for one and a half million dollars. Pretty neat. A little backstory to it, too. And then I thought this was interesting. Panini signs first high school player to a card and NIL, a card NIL, NIL autograph deal. Uh, <clears throat> exclusive multi year deal with Trey Johnson, one of the highest ranked players ranked players in the class of 2024, who recently left his Texas home and moved to Missouri, which has a much less stringent NIL rules. So now we're seeing Panini do this, which is pretty smart. Panini needs to evolve in order to become, uh, they're, they're not going to be competitive, but to continue making money. I can see them doing this with Cooper Flag, class of 2025 out of high school, main kid. So obviously I'm following his career. Um, so I'll be interested to see what Panini does over the coming months. Jokic, Game 3 jersey, which he was the first ever player to record 30 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists in an NBA Finals game. Sold for $148,000. Uh, his Game 1 jersey sold for $134,000. And then this Otani, which I have even better here on Fanatics, is currently current bid $5,001. Uh, the Zoom is better here, actually. So this is his kanji autograph. And then he wrote his nickname, Showtime. So I thought that was really cool. Bid is at 5000 right now. No idea how much this might go for. Still got two days to go. And then I just thought this was interesting. NHL draft full of hidden gems and memorabilia gold. Uh, the uh, Upper Decks senior brand manager for sports, Paul Zickler, is open to using any anything as a piece of memorabilia to use as a relic in a card. Um, he, uh, let's see, where is it? Stick shards, game-used pucks, net cords, and so on. And the ideas don't stop there. He's attempted to use, put game-used ice into a card. Brought in special vendors to, to wrangle sideboard plexiglass into the right shape for inserts. And even nabbed mascot jerseys for possible inclusion. He says, there's nothing that I'm not at least going to entertain that we can put into a card. I thought that was cool. Just really interesting background on those. And then... <laughs> Uh, Japan, U Japan 2 UK drew something on a card. You can see what that is. Sent it to PSA and PSA graded an 8. Now, this, this went semi-viral in the card community and PSA has since deactivated the certification. But it's kind of telling, as they say. Does this prove how little PSA actually checks cards before grading? Yeah, I don't know how you miss that. They just have no familiarity with the cards, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's crazy. That's all for today. Let me know in comments, what is your favorite of these items? Um, and would you rob a card shop during the day? Or would you wait until middle of the night? Seems to me like there's an obvious answer, but all right. Thanks all. Hope you have a great 4th of July and hope to see you in the live stream next Tuesday night, July 11th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. See ya.